、やっぱり神本の攻めが、えー、ああ、ファルコンアロー、真っ逆さまだ Been joined by the two men that join me every single week on every single episode Tyson Tulu to my left,、hey. Anthony Caruso directly across. What's up? Gentlemen, we have a lot to go over. There were some ups and there were some lows in the world of professional wrestling、yeah. or in the world of superstarring. Yep. Because we're talking about WWE, but well, t h e r e superstars. <laughs> this, was, this was an interesting week because. We had the premiere of Samoa Joe. This is an even more interesting week because I actually watched Raw this week. Yes. Hey,、yeah. did you watch the Hulu cut? No, I watched the actual you, Raw. Oh, wow.、Yeah. Hey, on、right、my on. DVR, I actually kind of caught up to、yeah. it live by the end. Oh, you did. Look at that. Bro. So,、uh, it was a shitty three hours. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. Until the end. Until the end. It's a long time, right? Two of the three gentlemen at this table watch it live. I, however, don't give a shit. <laughs> Still watch it on the Hulu cut. Because I'm lazy as fuck. Watching it live kind of, kind of makes it more of an occasion. Well, for a guy you know? with no cable, there's really no other option、uh, than、yeah, I have. And、saying. I pay for Hulu, yeah, so. You know, it makes like a thing, you know, it's coming on, you can、yeah. like, you know, get together with your boys. But、like. here's the best part about the Hulu cut there's a middle, or I'm sorry, there's a beginning, and then there's an end. <laughs> Skip all the crap in the middle. There's nothing in the I, middle. I fast forwarded to the cruiserweight nothing shit. Nothing in the middle whatsoever. But there's, like, like I said previously, there is a lot going on in the world of wrestling. And I do mean because of two men. We saw Samoa Joe premiere, which was amazing. Then Seth Rollins gets hurt. Now, where the hell are they going to go with this story? Apparently, I just found out,、uh, Anthony just filled me in on the fact that Seth Rollins will be out a good eight weeks. Torn MCL. That's so Torn same, MCL. Same knee he had injured. To, was it ACL tear, tear before, right? He's lo- yeah, ACL. Yeah, same knee. So there's a difference between one letter, and it saved his ass. Yeah, yeah right? The no. M and the A. Yep, not、okay. saving this rivalry, though. No. I like, thought it was his ACL and his MCL the first time. It might have been. That happens a lot. Yeah, I think, was, I think it was both the first time. But I mean, whatever. Well, this,、uh, this kind of feels like Chris Saban all over again. Well, it's a good thing the minor got hurt and not the. Chris Saban. Remember, like a few years ago, he tore TNA, both of his. He tore his ACL. He came back, and then he tore the other one like a week later. Oh yeah! yeah. And then, he, then he came back and won the cruiserweight or the X division, and then the, right after you know, he came back. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, Chris Saban's the fucking man,、yeah. dude. Except this time, Seth Rollins just threw away a seven-month、uh, angle. It took seven, almost a year, to even sniff Triple H into this. Nah,、category. it hasn't been that long. Since September. September. That's five months, dude. Oh.、Uh, well, yes.、Yeah, so、well, I mean, still, that's still a long, long time. It's though, still a long time. Like, here, here's the thing that sucks about it. Well, there's a lot of things that suck about it, but angle wise, here's the thing that sucks. Like, he's not going to have nearly as much momentum when, during his next comeback. Be- because he had, he had that whole seven months off,、nah. and he was such a. He was, one, he was literally on top. He was the top、nah. guy when he left. So. Coming back, like he had the huge ovation, and you know, then he kind of like did his like heel thing. and But now, like, he didn't he didn't really leave on a real high note. So when、yeah. he comes back, it's going to be, a, I, I feel like it's go, he's going to come back to not as big of a ovation as he did the first time around. I feel two ways about the situation with WWE about this situation. This situation with WWE about this situation. The positive is now when Seth Rollins does return. He has a reason to be mad at Samoa Joe. Yeah. Yeah. There's an angle that could be worked in here. And we don't want to see anybody get hurt.、Yeah. Okay. This, the angle itself was going to be great no matter what. It was going to be fine because Samoa Joe, you know,、yeah. could work an angle just fine on his own. However, being hurt intensifies、oh, of course. This, 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 this angle a lot more. It won't, int- it won't culminate at WrestleMania,、yeah. obviously. Sadly. Sadly, but. There's, there's, there's an angle to be worked on. It、here. also kind of kills another angle because when Finn comes back, there's no Seth for him to get pissed off at. So. The booking is up in the air completely、uh, at the moment.、Yeah. It's, 
quite the travesty at the moment. I did Do see that he sent him a get well card, though. That was nice. Yeah. Finn Balor sent him a little something. Yeah. Do you think they uh, they continue to use Samojo as Triple H is like mercenary so that when Seth does come back, he can kind of get it back at them both? Well, in no. Like one story. I think you put Joe against Triple H. There's really no one else that could do it. There's I've no heard, one else involved. I've heard, I've heard Why would Joe go against that? Triple H if he came out? I've to heard. It? I heard a possible like Joe Joe game angle. Well, the only reason it will work. There's no reason. The, the only reason it'll work is because you set up this angle where Joe is supposed to be the hitman or the mercenary or whatever. Yeah. It, it, Seth gets hurt. You have to throw a curveball, and, and you know Triple H is taking all the glory. And Joe says, "Well, listen, fucker, you didn't do this alone." I helped you. I, I guess. I, th there's nobody else. What who happened? Are, who what are we supposed to do? What happened to, the whole, what happened to the whole like Triple H Kevin thing? Like, wasn't Kevin his right hand man? Like, isn't that why he forked over Kevin, to title uh, to him and all that? And <sighs> isn't isn't that like supposed to be his? Well, oh, I wasn't his right hand man, but he was an NXT well, that was guy. His, that was right. his guy, and this it looked like a mirror of the authority angle. Like Triple H handpicked this guy to be yeah. like the next man, like the man yeah. to be the next guy, and all that. Well, and Joe's that guy now because he said he was gonna he's yeah. looking to pick the next one, and now came Joe. Yeah, well, he he said you know meet your destroyer, yeah. you know come down to ring and meet your destroyer. He didn't say he would be the next guy. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like but he they, said he was gonna he was gonna look for the next guy. Yeah, I, I, like I feel like he kind of like they didn't flush that Kevin angle out enough. Yeah. yeah. You know, for like the first two weeks, Kev's like, "Oh, you're just mad because now you know I'm sucking the game's dick and you're not, so you got yeah. cuffed out, I don't, bro." Like, I don't mean to throw a wrench in your in your little story right here, but. They took how long to get Seth and Triple H rolling here? I'm just saying. They ignored they ignored the initial angle for so yeah. long. Yeah, I'm just saying that like they it, they opened this thing up with like Kevin being the guy and that got thrown out the window, so well, yeah, how long is this Joe thing gonna last? Like it, just it literally that. felt like Triple H shows up. He became an asshole, he handed the belt over to Kev, and everyone caught amnesia. And Seth goes, eh, <laughs> whatever. I get screwed out of the belt. Oh, darn. Yeah. Seven months later, he's up in arms about Triple H all over again. So it's, it's got to be. The continuity yeah. is not so very, or the continuity is not very good on WWE's part. But it's never been good on WWE's part. So what does it matter? I don't know, man. Triple H must have been real busy for them to hold it off He's long. been busy creating. Yeah. Okay, and Seth ruined that. Because <laughs> he's a cunt, so that's why Triple H eventually came out. It took it took for this guy to invade his own show for him to eventually go. Nope, I'm putting my foot down, not on my turf, son. But there's a lot of ways that could, this could go. I, for one, do not know. I, but I do believe in my heart that Samoa Joe could. It wouldn't make any sense. It's the only way you could go. Unless you want to keep Joe going on with this destroyer thing and do Triple H's dirty work. Yeah, for him. Like, I, I think that's the only way you can go it, with it. Uh, yeah, you can't just introduce the guy as your boy and then and then have him fucking fight you like yeah. that's retarded. So this is WWE now. I know. I Nothing's know. out the window. Yeah, let's not rule anything out. But the way I see it, like Triple H just needs to step back from the whole Joe thing. Just say fuck that whole angle and just disappear again, and then just let Joe just be Joe and just like run rough shot through the locker room, you know, like he does. Went his way to a natural cap, and uh, yes. just let him do that. Well, aside from those news, a lot of people were skep uh, or speculating that Seth Rollins is doing this as a work. Obviously, we know that not to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Initially, in the first like twelve hours, like they were thinking, "Oh, is this for real? Is it a real? It's it's for real." Yeah, not a people word. thought this was a troll job. Uh, yeah. Hey, they're on a roll. Well, yeah, would be the first time. It makes sense. They think because yeah. Nakamura did the whole. Work yeah. in the Bobby Roode match, the knee work. It makes sense for people to believe that, but yeah, it, it makes sense. Sadly, uh, Seth has come across with the Hideo Itami disease. Yeah, uh, <laughs> kept on television for more than a couple of months. Glass bones. But this is pretty sad because we were all looking forward to this big blow off. Okay, I personally enjoyed the takeover. Uh, Segment with yeah. Seth Rollins. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Taking over, take over. That segment over. was literally the coolest thing Seth's done in like four months, though. Like outside of that, yeah. it's been a lot of whining, a lot of matches. Now here's, but here's you another know, question that I have anything. for WWE, and they discontinue this. I don't know what happened to this. What happened to the Rollins report? 
dude, it, it went the way of the rest of the fucking yeah. like random ass, you know, That's sad. fucking shows that they have. Yeah, That's sad. I enjoyed the Rollins report. It was fun seeing Seth go to the ring and go, Where's Triple H? Yeah. Every single week on Monday Night Raw. They stashed this shit right next to the Ambrose Asylum, yeah. and, you know. And Miz TV. Miz TV. And the and highlight like, reel. Yeah, Jericho's King's Court. Thing. Yeah, all, uh, all, Court. That, <laughs> all that silly shit. Like, nobody needs a segment, man. <laughs> other, other news in the wrestling world. The Cruiserweights. Okay, this comes to no surprise to anybody. The cruiserweights are being considered, or Vince is considering, removing the cruiserweights yeah. from Monday Night Raw altogether if they do not improve on their ratings. Yeah, which, with the way they're going, I don't see how they could, because it's, it's trash all the way around. And somebody made this abundantly clear, it was David Meltzer, that said that the cruiserweights will never thrive in the environment that Raw is being booked in. And, no shit. No shit. This... Who didn't see this coming at some point? Yeah. Before you gentlemen go, I would like to throw out my opinion on this real quick. Pigeonholing the cruiserweights into this 205 hole of everybody who's a tiny fucking vanilla midget has to be in one division fighting for one belt. You've got all this talent and one belt. I, I've always complained about this. Why are we not integrating guys onto the main roster with other guys on the main roster? Why do we have to have a special segment, special ropes, special everything? Why do the Cruiserweights get all That's, of a sudden this different show vibe? What's the point of having a division, though, if they're going to be involved in other stuff on the main roster, though? Well, my, why, why not? You know, why not? Why not what? Why, why not have them do other stuff? Like, why can't they wrestle guys that aren't other 205 guys, you know? Like... You can still have the division. They had a cruiserweight division. They had a cruiserweight title before. I guess. That's and it true, didn't have yeah. to be like a, you know. The division itself is fine, but look at how many guys we've got to work with here. Yeah, like here, here's the thing, all right? The, the cruiserweight classic was fantastic. It was great. The tournament mm -hmm. was awesome. It was a great idea. It was huge. And then, like, they wanted to capture that and make it, you know, like a permanent thing. And I get, I get that, but... There's not enough personality to justify yeah. them having their own show. None they're, of those guys have personality. They're not. They're not. It's not booked that great. And here, here's what they could have done. And here's what I thought they were going to do. Okay, I thought that they were going. I, first of all, I didn't think they were going to bring that many of them in. Like I thought the winner and maybe a handful of others that did really, really well were going to be brought in. But I suppose if you're going to introduce a whole new belt into the thing, then you have to have guys to fight for it, right? So I guess there weren't that many small guys. On the program, they should have brought in maybe like eight dudes. You know, like, yeah. They they didn't need to open the doors and bring like the whole damn tournament in. Basically, yeah. they could have brought in like eight guys, the and, uh, and that would have had Ibushi. enough. That would have had enough guys to, like fight for the title and stuff. But it also would have been a small enough number where they could have just integrated into the brands by themselves. Yeah, and you know you could still have them fighting with you know like my you know, Ambrose and stuff. My issue here is. Why do they all of a sudden become an alternate entity on Raw? Why why do we have to have purple ropes and a different hat and everything becomes purple yeah. for one segment? They, because branding is more important. Yeah, because they really, really, really want 205 Live to be relevant. Yeah. You know what the cruiserweight... Branding it to death, though, doesn't... Do you want to yeah. know what cruiserweight means now on television, on Raw? Piss Let's break. break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We don't give a fuck about any of these guys And the crowd's at all. so dead for all their the matches. crowds, yeah. everyone's getting fucking chips. Everyone's getting fucking smoothies. Everyone's I going fast to get forwarded through the Tony D's match on Raw today, or last night. Because, night. like, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because by making it its own entity, they've alienated it from the rest of the product. So, like, you That's know that... problem. You yeah. know that everything that happens within the realm of 205 Live only matters yeah. to 205 Live yeah. people. So you can take a piss break when yeah. that's high because you know, okay, someone's going to win and maybe someone's going to get the belt, yeah. but who cares? It's, it's good to no keep one's, rotating. No one's going the same to set of guys. Yeah. No one's going to interact with anyone important. So yeah. what does it matter? Yeah, none of those guys are going to influence any of the other belts yeah. or any other superstars. So it doesn't really matter, you know. Like and and another issue is that they 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 market two hundred five live and the cruiserweights as high flying and you can't miss this action. Okay, except they watered down the style. They water exactly. They watered down the style. 
So they're only performing to WWE cruiserweight standards, yeah, which is, God. hey guys, uh, how about maybe two kicks and maybe one flip? Yeah. yeah. But just keep it, you know, yeah. keep it tamed, okay? The cruiserweight match at the Royal Rumble between Rich Swan and fucking Neville was a glorified fucking chokehold the whole yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, it, be, it got good towards the end, but it was mostly Neville, you know, putting this guy in a fucking headlock and slowing down the cruiserweight champion, which, by the way... If Neville's the best part of your cruiserweight division, you failed. Neville was there already. He wasn't one of these new guys. Yeah. But he was an established guy. But so you know, he was doing fine. Well, not he wasn't doing great because the boy, but he was doing fine when they were actually like using him against like Stardust and using him like in different stuff. And he was actually in programs. Neville had a pretty good following. You know, people liked Neville. He was. They, he was. You know? Dying a slow death, but yeah, yeah, but he, I mean, yeah, but I mean, but when they were using him a couple years ago, like SummerSlam and shit, like two years ago, like he, he did well on his own. You know, he was he was a popular character. I think this all boils down to one thing, okay? When it comes to cruiserweights, or for the most part, anything WWE does, especially on Raw, WWE does not know how to produce baby faces. They are really good at making heels. Well, being getting being heels, heels over is, an easy is thing not to do. hard to be healed. No, it's but they they get heels over yeah. mighty fast. Yeah, and mighty with because ease. the problem with baby faces they're scripted to death and nothing is genuine about anything they do. They haven't it's created to, one it's so good easy to see past it. There hasn't been one good baby face in this whole. Fucking, everyone's like either the, in the middle or a sh- the full last on bad really guy. good baby face in WWE was CM Punk. Yeah, I, I feel like in like. And correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to have a really good face, sometimes you need to have really good heels to, like, bring that out. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you need good heels to make yeah. good faces. But that doesn't overcome, like, how scripted to death these yeah. guys are and how robotic they sound. And Like, back in the day, you wanted a, f- a good baby face. All you needed to do was have some broad, like, the whole damsel in the stress angle. Have yeah. some broad having problems in the ring. Have some guy come out and save her. Boom. Instant, instant yeah. face. Instant face turn. It could be anybody. It could be like, literally anybody. Like when Stone Cold saves saves Stephanie McMahon from unholy matrimony with the Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> like, like even fucking Umaga, God rest his soul. If he if he came out and saved Trish Stratus or something, he'd instantly be over as a face. Everyone would be like, yeah. "Oh, Umaga's such a nice yeah. guy." You know, he kept fucking Sean Stasiak from doing that thing I, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Umaga and Sean Stasiak. <laughs> be a, imagine in 2017. Be a rivalry and a half. I think especially in this day and age, okay, guys who come out and spew the same cookie-cutter garbage are cringeworthy for a lot of reasons, and I would like to point to TJ Perkins. God, was this fucking guy as copy and paste as it can get. Uh, I'm the cruiserweight champion, and I'm better than everybody, and you're going to see. Okay? Then you got Neville going, Puh, this sucks. You suck. He sucks. I hate my life. And everyone loves it. Yeah. That's how wrestling works now. That's that's the demographic we're working with here. We don't want to be good guys anymore. That's that's just it. That's just the way wrestling's been for a long time now. Baby faces, it's a kiss of death. Unless you're Sammy fucking Zayn and Bailey. That's yeah. it. Oh, God. They're, Sammy's cringeworthy they're, now, they're but they're doing a pretty good job of, of killing Bailey. They're killing. Oh, Bailey's her one foot so in the grave. Hard, dude. Bailey's one foot in the grave. They didn't help her with this whole S. And it, look at her and Charlotte, quintessential peel baby face. Nah. Charlotte's going. Look at Bailey. She once had a childhood. <laughs> Laugh at her. <laughs> Bailey's like, oh, my dad would sure take me to those shows. Like me, because I like wrestling. We all like wrestling. It's not an angle. Nah. Belly does a half-ass belly to belly. I, I, there, I said it. I said it. That move fucking sucks, man. It's so bad. She does it so bad. I'm sorry. Anybody else? No, by a load. It's a care. belly to belly. Yeah, but like, it, 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 it's, I, I've seen some belly to bellies that look fucking good. You know, she basically like kind of gives you like a hip toss onto the ground. She's well, she's a baby face. She don't want to slam her too hard. I know. Yeah. She, 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 what to do with these? You know what would be cool? Belly heel turn. Boom. 
Yeah. I said, okay. Bailey yeah. Hill. Okay. She we'll come, never see that. She comes Better out. Better chance of seeing John Cena make a heel turn. Better she, chance of seeing Roman Reigns make she a heel come, turn. Just, just picture it. She comes out in some real risque shit. You know, like they take her outfit, throw her some little shorts or something. You know what I'm talking about. We'd be all over that shit because we're animals. A Bailey thick. heel turn. In my mind, I see wacky waving inflatable two men in red with sad faces. They're all flipping the fucking inflatable bird. <laughs> they're not really waving very. They're not waving very uh, enthusiastically. They're just yeah. They're, they're they're flipping everyone off in the crowd. She and like reaches out to give a kid a headband and like yanks it back at the last minute. Like fuck you. You slow her song down to like so much. Yeah. Right. It, it's almost unbearably evil. Comes out wearing mad makeup. You know, that's, it's that's like, awful. It's an awful fucking <laughs> idea. Well, anyways, th- those are the big things this week on in wrestling. Yeah. Now, Monday Night Raw. Well, uh, until they fix the cruiserweights, as far as booking them goes, they will never do anything. I have a piece of news that I want to add when we're talking about cruiserweights. There is a uh, there's a new free agent to add to the mix. Who's this? Really? Uh, uh, apparently, Ricochet's contract has expired. And no, there is Lucha no Underground. way. Can't wait for Ricochet to come and yeah. be useless and dub. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up to that. They Hopefully might let him take the 630 and that's it. Hopefully he comes in. Not even. If he signs, he goes to NXT and off a of 205. Here's, R- here's, Ricochet's, yeah. here's Ricochet's meeting with the creative staff at WWE. So everything you do, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many flips can you do? How many angles yeah. can you do? <laughs> Cut it in half. And then we know you have no personality, but we're going to need you to talk. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to force you lot. We're gonna force you on the mic, and you're going to have to say things like, on 205 Live, I'm going to win the Cruiserweight Championship. Beep, boop. And that's Ricochet's <laughs> career in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, by the way, you're going to wear this hat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the only person with any personality on 205 Live in any of the Cruiserweights is Neville. Neville. Yeah. Because he looks right at the and camera, Jack Gallagher, and Jack chews Gallagher. gum, and goes, Oh, it's over five live. I'm going to be giving everyone a fucking mad arrow. Don't miss her. <laughs> that's, that's 205 Live. It's it's Neville Live. It's yeah. Neville Live right after SmackDown. <laughs> Don't miss out because the Cruiseweights have one belt and no tag division. So, what does it matter? that be? Like, one wrestler on the Rock should have his own show for a whole hour. <laughs> The Neville stare down fest for an entire hour because he that guy is so mad about everything. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't. I, how does this guy brush his teeth in the morning without like wanting to kill himself? Monday Night Raw. Okay, I will just say it without going into too much. Braun Strowman's the only good thing about Raw anymore. <laughs> yeah. Braun is the most logical character on Monday Night Raw I've seen in a long time, and I do say that. Because this man remembered something that happened a, a month ago yeah. that Kevin Owens I told had him. No idea that happened. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Kevin goes, "No, this is CGI. It can't be. This is not real." And Braun goes, "No, you told me you'd give me a title shot if I if Roman didn't win. Roman's out of the picture. So, uh, haha, looks like you owe me." So kudos to WWE for uh, remembering yeah. stuff. Yeah, having a memory longer yeah. than wow. two weeks. Wow, we have an angle that works. You know, they always remembered. It's just whether they choose to apply. Mm. Well, we all forgot bad. the Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers yep. to the Rumble shot. but Or the Rumble shot to the Rumble, uh, Rumble match. Speaking of shots, Strowman does want a title shot. <laughs> and funny enough, he gets it. On Monday Night Raw, the very same night that he asks for it. So this guy works mighty quick. Yep. Doesn't waste any time. I love how, like, Braun always calls his matches. Like, every Braun segment goes like this. Kicks the fucking door in, gr- grips up either the GM or, you know, whoever, grab, grab Stephanie by the fucking tits. Is like, I want a match. I want it tonight. This is who I wanted to get. So they're like, all right, Braun, calm down. Calm down. You got it, buddy. He's like, all right, cool. And then he just leaves. And that's, that's the whole thing. Braun is the best bully on Raw, and no one yeah. can take that away from him at the moment. He's a lot of fun. And I've I, seen him call, like, three of his matches. It's fantastic. <laughs> like, this, my man wanted Sami Zayn and ripped apart half the fucking locker room until yep. he got him. And you this know? is why Braun Strowman as a character is working at the moment, because this man is serious about his job. Yeah. No, As opposed to WWE writing, where everyone just jumps through holes and does stupid things, this man goes... No, I want a belt. I want the belt. I want a title shot tonight. And then he wanted to get Seth, it tonight. He, he wanted Seth. He tore the fucking place down. Kicked his ass. Kicked yeah. Seth's ass. Kicked. This guy's on a roll, and I, I appreciate it. I want Roman. And I want Sammy. Like. And the reason I, why I love this even more is that Braun's a heel. Kevin's a heel. 
We're doing heel on heel stuff here. Heel on heel stuff is cool. And Braun Strowman doesn't give a fuck if you're a heel or a babyface. Yeah. He wants to kick everybody's ass. That's what makes him even better. Yeah. Because he's here to kill people. Funny enough, a guy on the roster is here to wrestle and win. Yeah. <laughs> what a concept. Holy fuck. <laughs> Fucking roll out the red carpet for this guy. However, during this match with KO... Oh, by the way, another logical thing Braun Strowman did, he took out Chris Jericho before the match started. Oh, we've learned something today. If a guy interferes enough, kick his ass so he can't interfere anymore. I like this guy a lot. I like Braun so much. This a young man is a bright future. <laughs> very, very bright future. Lo and behold, after the match, or during the uh, before the ending of this match, Roman Reigns comes out and just crushes everybody's dreams of having a... A uh, Braun Strowman championship victory. And of course, Strowman interjects because he waited an entire night to uh, interfere in Braun Strowman's match. The Royal Rumble, oh no, no, that's, that's fine. You know, we're not going to interfere in the Royal Rumble. It costs the guy the match. We're going to do it the next night. Haha. Roman's got stuff up his sleeve. Anyways, Seth Rollins comes out afterwards. And, and if I miss anything, clue me in here, because I, I, I'm only talking about things that matter on this no, show. Go, go on, yeah. I don't give a fuck about anything yeah. else on the show. Seth Rollins comes out, because he's supposed to have a face-to-face -face with Stephanie McMahon. Now, I thought they were going to kiss or something. That would have been sweet. That's not what happened here. They, <laughs> they, 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 they were talking like regular humans, which was kind of gay. But anyways, Seth Rollins is on a roll, man. This guy's knocking over women, and he's threatening to beat up children now. Yeah. What a guy. Well, he didn't threaten to beat him up. He just... Uh, he heavily implies, uh, he's like, what's going to happen when I'm at your front door and your kid answers the door? What? And I'm naked. Yeah. like, like what, what are they going to do about I'm it? I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what is going to happen, Seth? Why don't you enlighten us? What, what you're going to do when the children do answer the door? He's not going to beat up the kids, but the kids are going to have to watch as he maims Triple H in their home. I guess. Or, <laughs> I mean, he didn't say. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe he just opens his trench coat from Who knows? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was like really vague and hey, weird and just let's be honest <laughs> here. The kids probably saw his dick too. We've all <laughs> oh, seen man. Seth's cock already. Yeah, you know I, I forgot about that. Actually, hey, it's almost uh, Valentine's Day, so it's gonna be like what, like the two year anniversary of him <laughs> leaking nudes on the internet. <laughs> hey, man, we've all seen Seth's cock, man. It's no big deal. The kids, kids won't. The it won't be anything new to them. The chick that he sent that to, she was in developmental, right? She is was. She, is she, uh, is she I like? This. I is she active yet? Because uh, I wanted to no, know. She's she been got gone. Fired. She uh, got fired. She got fired for being a Nazi. Oh, 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 really? Well, she had some Nazi propaganda, like, in, like... Like, Teal is a Kila style, or, like... I, no, I don't think it was that bad, but, uh... I don't remember the full story, but there was some Nazi propaganda that, like, found, like, uh, like old pictures of, like, Twitter or Instagram or something. So, that's the headline. Seth Rollins shows penis to Nazi. You heard it here <laughs> first. <laughs> and it wasn't her... And it wasn't the girl that she was... The Nazi girl that leaked the photos. It was his ex fiance Yeah, because she found out yeah. and shit. Yeah. Call a wrestling observer because Seth is having had sex with a Nazi, folks. Well, or at least attempted to. He's, oh, he's paying for it now. Yeah. <laughs> he sure is paying for it. So after this, we were to expect Triple H on the show because Stephanie goes, I lied. <laughs> I lied. He's here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Still on his way Seth's right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I'm so sick and, and tired of beating fucking, up like, women. Weird fucking, like, no, aggressive not. voice. <laughs> she yeah. mentioned that Triple H was coming for him. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was kind of weird. Yeah. So Steph returned the threats to uh, Seth Rollins. So we anxiously awaited the return of the game on Monday Night Raw. Now, there was a backstage segment with the club and Cesaro and Sheamus. It's good to see the belts on the club, but I just looked at them and I went... What a bunch of fucking nerds. Yeah. Look at them. <laughs> celebrating. Six too late. <laughs> celebrating <laughs> that championship victory with Charlotte calling themselves. And then Charlotte cuts the most Charlotte promo ever. <laughs> Look, it's the losers. <laughs> Fuck off. Seriously. She needs a better script. She needs a better promo uh, job. I, I can't stand this bitch anymore. She makes me cringe. I'm sorry. I'm just so sorry about this. It, yeah. it eventually led to a six-man or... A six-person yeah. intergender tag match where Bailey pins Charlotte. And once again, Charlotte, afraid of the cable. Yeah. And 
can't get over on cable television to save her life. So what's her losing streak at on Monday Night Raw? Oh, probably, it's got to be up there. Probably just uh, as big as her winning streak on pay per views, yeah. right? Because she loses after the next one. Each Sixteen time. and zero, I guess. I don't fucking know, but what a waste! You, you looked at Charlotte in the club and you went, "No one cares anymore." Nope. Been there, done that. Yeah. That that ship's passed. But we do need to start implementing women against men in that in that regard because they're they're competitors. Yeah. They need to get their ass kicked they're along with to be on the equal men. Footing with the men now, so. You guys want to fight for equal rights? I we'll can't wait for Charlotte versus Braun Strowman. <laughs> uh, Bailey needs to take a magic killer before her yeah. career's over. I think it's still too early. You know, it's, it's, it's too still, early. It's still. It's. Uh, I think the uh, the WWE universe so, isn't ready for. Uh, you know, d- you're telling checks. me a man could could talk about grabbing them by the pussies oh, and then women yeah. go all up in arms and go, "We're the same as men." But if you give them a suplex. Not anymore. Oh no! Here's the thing. <laughs> it's out of the question. Here, here's now. the thing, and I've been saying this: if you limit it to like actual spots, like wrestling moves and shit, then I think that would be okay. But any kind of strike, I think, would be ill received. Like I'm you sorry. DDT some chick, not a big deal. You slap her in the middle of the ring, everyone's going to be pissed. Though, in like the scope of wrestling, like the DDT is like a harder hit than like a straight oh, to the face. Oh, but of course, but you know, you, you can't... Yeah, the optics yeah, are not Yeah, the good. optics are... No, it's just... It, it doesn't look good. I mean, yeah. like, you know, 15 years ago, absolutely. Right now, eh, it's a brave yeah. new world, man. But you gotta ask yourself, is it more sexist not to hit them? You know, like... Uh, I mean, they want to be treated like the same, right? They're wrestlers, right? They work their ass well, off, right? You know, you know how how backhanded and weird feminism works, man. Yeah. Like, we you know they want all the perks, but they don't want to lose, you know, like yeah. ladies' nights on fucking Tuesdays <laughs> and two for one specials at the bar, and you know uh, that is shit. a little ass backwards. Yeah, when you think about it. feminism. This can totally this podcast can to, podcast can totally <laughs> take a new turn. <laughs> yeah. so we don't want to get into I'll that just, debauchery. I'll just, I'll just say this, and I think I said this in the last cast or one of the, one of the more recent casts, is that. In action movies with female leads, they end up generally fighting males, and are and, and hit, have strikes and stuff. So why why can't you do it in wrestling? Uh, Everybody, every other promotion's doing it. That's I don't true. know about Ring of Honor, but most I, most promotions, most indies, most promotions do, and the dub used to, but. It's the PG era, guys. You can't do that shit anymore. Right. All right. But I mean, there were like PG shows or like table uh, cable shows or network shows that have female leads that have are in action sequences against men. I think I don't see why there would be the outrage. Maybe. Oh, I mean, I, I get it, but maybe I if, if it was done in a more tasteful manner yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. Back in the day, you had like, you know. Triple H and Stone Cold like beating the shit out of Lita with a bunch yeah. of chairs and Dean Malenko like you know doing all the shit he did like well that was to get heat and yeah, it got some very serious that, heat like you can't you can't do it like that anymore like I feel here, here's how I feel I feel like if they do the women's tournament like they're uh, like they're supposed to in the summer yeah. you get chicks like you sign some chicks like Candice LeRae and shit yep and then you have her have like the first ever well the we can call it the first of the new era yeah. intergender match see how that goes over. Then I could see them maybe working yeah. that in gradually. Yeah. It has to be like a situation, I think, where the woman has to challenge the man. Yeah, yeah. that would that would have to be like a very specific kind of match. Yeah. It'd have to be like just the intergender match. You couldn't be cutting like promos and doing yeah. like vignettes where chicks are getting hit, having yeah. stuff like that in the ring. Like. And you should probably save it for like a woman who's who has a more aggressive personality. Absolutely. Who has a bit of a rough, like stronger you need to have, look. You need like, to have like Nia Jax. Challenge yeah. some like challenge Braun like Strowman for the undefeated championship <laughs> <Yeah>. overall. <laughs> well, as much as we all love to see a challenge like Ellsworth or something, nah. you know, where she can throw him around and make him look like a little bitch. Nah. You know, yeah, like, Carmella could cha- challenge Ellsworth. Yeah. That would be more believable than anybody else. Like that would be cool. Well, so far in, in the history of wrestling, China, obviously, we saw I saw Sable powerbomb Mark Marrow. That was cool. Uh, aside I, from that, I'm not sure. I saw Terry Reynolds become hardcore champion once. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know who didn't compete in him? Or Karma. Karma in the Royal Rumble. That was cool. You know who never competed? I don't know if she ever did, but she, it, it would have been nice to see her in a feud. Beth Phoenix. That was one yeah. hell of a woman. Yeah. That's a woman that would kill me yeah. in a sack. Okay? Uh, so, she but was Jack, dude. She was. Now, 
it's the big finish for Monday Night Raw. Now, apologize. I, I, I offer apologies if I missed anything in the middle. Which there was nothing important. Who gives a fuck anymore? No one cares anymore. So we get to the segment of Triple H cutting his face promo. This promo, I thought, was very, very well done. And I mean that by saying Triple H was just just some guy, man. Just some guy. He's got a job down at NXT. Look, man, I'm, I'm just trying to fucking... I'm just trying to be daddy. All right? I'm not trying to do this anymore, Seth. Stop being a fucking asshole, man. Took the boots off, man. That's it. It's over. And I believed him. And it sounded great. Now, the question that was brought up amongst the wrestling world this week, and a lot of people were talking about it, was... How did Seth let this guy cut a five-minute promo without just running out there and kicking his ass? What is this? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this guy's been fuming for months. Yeah. Maybe he showed just, up on his fucking show. The, maybe he just that. really, really, really wanted to hear what he had to say. I. It was a good promo, though. So it was, it was worth it. I yeah. mean, it, the logic is not there, but it was yeah. It was a lot of... It, the I, the I, game I, was basically like, you know, I've been. it's taken everything in my power to not whip your ass. <laughs> so you should be lucky. Feel fortunate. So Triple H rips off his 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 uh, his coat, and he's sweating profusely underneath it. By he the way, buttons his buttons and <laughs> rolls up his shit. Tells him, "Let's do this, motherfucker." And so Seth comes out with no shirt on. He's like, Seth no, never. No, he came out with a shirt. Oh, he came out with. Oh, he, he took, took it off. It off. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was under the assumption he never no, wears a he shirt. He took that shit off the top. This guy loves to there. show his uh, his bare chest like he shows his dick off on the internet. Hey. <laughs> Then he gets cut off by the destroyer Samoa Joe, and everybody said, "Thank God, yeah. where was this guy a night a night prior?" But it was a good debut, and it was good to see Joe just kicking ass. Yeah, no talking. Just went out like there, choked the motherfucker out. And in the process, broke his fucking leg. Which I don't uh, even know, like, how did he do that? Because he didn't really do anything specifically to the leg. It was I a situation I, where he had him in the Coquita clutch, and he was gonna... He was holding him on, standing up, and then at some point he was just gonna twist and just drag him down like a man. And in the process of twisting and pulling him, Seth's leg, I imagine... Turned in an awkward way. Oh, that sucks. Fucked his knee up. Yeah. So yeah, you you could see it on the. If you look, go back and watch it. It does take a weird turn. Yeah. So in the middle of taking him down to put him in a in a in a good you know hold, he fucked up his leg. So it was something completely, not any physical activity, not any like during a match or anything. It's just it just happened because of which sucks. Like, that's not fun. That's not cool. But that just tells you that Seth doesn't have great knees at all. No. <laughs> or great legs. And it sucks because, let's be honest, Seth, when he got hurt the first time after an ACL injury, you're never the same. So it yeah. feels like Seth's going a million miles an hour all the time. And after a leg injury like that, you have to kind of bring it back. But yeah. he doesn't bring it back. He keeps moving, you know, as fast as possible. And eventually... You're gonna fuck up both your legs all the time, which yeah. you know. Well, that was just an accident. That well, yeah, but 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 if minor accidents like that are happening, it just means his he's pushing his leg to the limits yeah. where it's not supposed to go because he had a fucking ACL. And yeah. anyone that's ever had an ACL injury, uh, I've never personally had yeah. one. I I hope I never do, and I never wish it on anybody. But afterwards, they're not the same ever. Usually, mm. you know, it's never the same deal with them. They they can't do what they once did, but. Yeah, but this 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 promo and this whole segment was awesome. It saved. Yeah. This raw was not bad. It was okay on the Hulu cut. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't watch the full version. Yeah. Right? If you guys endured the three hours, I did not. But this raw was at the best is only okay though. It was only good for the ending. Yeah, that was. Let's it. be honest. Well, everything else, everything else is okay. But I, I, you can talk about the uh, the Lesnar Goldberg or the Lesnar oh. Heyman. Well, we knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Lesnar comes out and yeah. says, hey. And they went with the whole fake, the first cut to the uh, outside with the limo. They thought it was Triple H, and then out comes Heyman and uh, yeah, and Lesnar. Lesnar. So another unannounced appearance by Brock Lesnar. Yeah. But, you know, we all knew this was happening. So, womp. Yeah. Cool.